Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the One Planet City Challenge 2020 felicitation and discussion on climate proofing smart cities. We are honored to have with us today Mr. S.J. Haider, Principal Secretary, Climate Change Department, Government of Gujarat, and Mr. Ravi Singh, Secretary General and CEO, WWF India. We extend a very warm welcome to you all, sir. This session will also have experts deliberate on cities as stakeholders in the climate and sustainability agenda. Before we begin, I would request all the participants to put their respective questions if they have any during any time of the discussion in the Q&A section. And we shall take these questions up after the end of the discussion during the Q&A session. Without further ado, I would now like to request Mr. Ravi Singh, Secretary General and CEO WWF India, to deliver his opening remarks. Sir, please. Thank you. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. And uh, <clears throat> before I start, um, uh, everyone's present. Haider Saab is present. Hello. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. And Mr. Haider is also with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my uh, thanks to Shri S. J. Haider for being for participating in this session. Also to Mr. Udit Agarwal, who I believe is present, Commissioner of Rajkot Municipal Corporation. And uh, uh, very welcome uh, to this session, which is both unique as well as uh, very uh, transformational as we look at our urban planning for the coming decades. India has witnessed uh, rapid uh, urbanization and the population of our country is expected to be uh, more than 40% in 2030. And uh, this uh, rapidly growing carbon emissions um, as a result of this have urban origins emanating from transportation, industry, buildings, waste management, all contributing towards climate change. On the one hand, cities are contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. On the other hand, they're also most vulnerable to these impacts, the impacts of climate change, I think. And besides devising low carbon growth strategies, enhancing energy efficiency in sectors such as housing and transportation, something that India is working on, and promoting a shift to renewables, our cities would also require focus on conservation of resources, preservation of, of urban biodiversity. Conserving biodiversities in cities, particularly contributing to green spaces, city forests, has co-benefits of the urban heat island effect in reducing this heat island effect. It helps to recharge water and leads to conservation of wetlands which uh, provide life to uh, life, livelihood, and eco cohabitation of these ecosystems with our cities all across the country. Now, recognizing cities as an integral part of the climate change solution, WWF launched the Global Earth City, Earth Hour City Challenge in 2012, which has now been re renamed as One Planet City Challenge, or abbreviated as OPCC. This is a biennial uh, global challenge that recognizes cities for their ambitions and innovative actions and plans. This OPCC program aims to strengthen networking amongst different shareholders, locally and nationally, to foster knowledge sharing, best practices, partnerships, and many other forms of cooperation. And six, since 2012, 26 Indian cities across 16 states have been part of the challenge. This gives me great pride as an Indian, and I hope that more cities participate as a result of it. 
In this latest round of the OPCC for 2019-20, eight Indian cities participated. Guwahati, Gangtok, Indore, Kochi, Nagpur, Panaji, Pune, and Rajkot. And with, uh, uh, with this, Rajkot, Nagpur, and Kochi were amongst the 59 finalist cities from across 50 countries. 50 countries participated. And these three of our cities from India were among the 59 finalist cities. It is my great pleasure to announce that Rajkot emerged as the national winner from India for the third time this year. Rajkot has progressively displayed intent and de developed capacities to implement ambitious climate initiatives across different sectors, such as renewable energy, energy efficiency, smart buildings, sustainable air transport, and climate resilience. The city has committed to reduce 14% of total greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2022 and 2023 from the baseline of 2015-16. Just to mention that my organization WWF is also involved in the assessment of city level climate action and its alignment with state and national climate goals. WWF India is an alliance member of the Ministry of Urban Housing and Urban Development, uh, Climate Change Center for Cities, which is called the C-Cube. This was launched in June 2020. We are also supporting the Climate Smart Cities Assessment Framework as a member of the thematic subgroup on urban planning, green cover, and biodiversity. All this going towards the goal of limiting global warming, warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade. Thank you for your participation. I look forward to the uh, coming event. Cong congratulations to Rajkot, a city that I enjoy visiting and I've done so several times. And I uh, wish all the other cities success. And I, I, I hope that we can lead the world by example, by making some of these goals, bringing them into practice and bringing more and more cities and urban settlements under this kind of an impact. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Singh. Moving on, it's now time to felicitate the One Planet City Challenge 2020 national winning city from India. And to do so, can we have the short video over the screen, please? Thank you. Moving on, um, Mr. Udit Agarwal, the Commissioner of Rajkot Municipal Corporation, who was supposed to join us, couldn't do so, do so due to last minute urgent engagement. But we have amidst us Mr. Chetan Nandani, Deputy Commissioner Rajkot Municipal Corporation. Therefore, I would now like to invite Mr. Nandani to say a few words. Sir, please. Uh, respected Haydi, sir. Uh, respected others. Uh, we thank all the stakeholders uh, who have helped us in this journey, especially SDC-funded capacities project and ICLI, 
and even the WWF who have given us an opportunity to present our case. In fact, uh, having this award, it has ensured stronger st stakeholder participation, uh, ensured better linkages within our organization and even within the other organization. The rigorous process helped us not just to strengthen ourselves, but also to engage in further processes like uh, climate change assessment framework, which is right now being done by smart cities. In fact, uh, because of this, we could integrate climate change adaptation in our day-to-day -day decision making for sectors such as transport, water, wastewater, green energy cover, urban planning. At present, we are uh, rigorously working for a project, Cycle 4 Changed. We are developing a 47-acre urban green forest in Rajkul. In fact, we have already taken up rejuvenation of three lakes in the city. We will be very soon having 50 e-buses applying on the city of Rajkot. In fact, we have tendered for 100 new buses. So within a span of one and a half year, 100% of the city transport will be e-buses. In fact, we are also ensuring implementation of schemes like Ujara very regularly in the city of Rajkot. I like to commit that we will not be ending here. In fact, we will be taking this as our responsibility to take this process ahead and also act as a lighthouse for cities in the country and out of the country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nandani, and congratulations to the Rajkot city. Thank you. I would now like to request Mr. S.J. Haider, Principal Secretary, Climate Change Department, Government of Gujarat, to kindly deliver his keynote address. Sir, over to you. Good day, please. Domain experts, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings to one and all. It's a matter of pleasure and honor to be with all of you on this virtual platform to felicitate WWF's One Planet City Challenge National winner, the city of Rajkot, and for the participation in the webinar on climate proofing smart cities. At the outset, I must congratulate Team Rajkot for having put up a stellar performance. And I believe uh, other cities of Gujarat are also not lagging behind. And I'm very happy to note that the right degree of sensitization is there and all of us stand firmly and unequivocally committed to the cause of addressing the concerns of climate change. As all of you know, Gujarat is one of the most progressive states in the country and it is also known as the growth engine of India. Acknowledging the new importance and seriousness of global climate concerns, the state of Gujarat established an independent department of climate change way back in September 2009 under the visionary leadership of the then Honorable Chief Minister and presently Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. Our department has already completed 11 years of its establishment. The government of Gujarat, at the highest level of administration, is committed to building a sustainable and climate resilient future and enabling a low carbon pathway for Gujarat's economic growth that would meet people's aspirations with equity and inclusiveness. Our department is working under the direct guidance of Honorable Chief Minister Shri Vijay Rupani. 
considering the impacts of global warming and climate change on our economy and our society, the state has formulated a slew of policies and programs that have the potential to counter the challenges of climate change while at the same point of time ensuring sustainable development of victims. I feel privileged to learn that the One Planet City Challenge is WWF's biennial global challenge that recognizes cities for their ambition and innovative actions in sectors such as energy, buildings, transport, waste to power, the global transition to a low carbon climate resilient future. The challenge aims to assess cities' progressive climate actions, focus on impactful change, and accelerate efforts for a sustainable and climate smart future. WWF has created this platform to facilitate knowledge sharing, networking, and stakeholder engagement at the local, national, and global level. I'm aware that the city of Rajkot has taken many an initiative in this direction of climate resilience, and therefore the city is being felicitated today. I once again congratulate Rajkot Municipal Corporation and in fact the entire district administration for their proactive work in the direction of climate action. However, there is no room for complacency for any one of us. We firmly believe that there is still a long way to achieve much more in the field of climate change adaptation and mitigation through our collective and concerted efforts. Gujarat, I reiterate, is working comprehensively for mainstreaming climate action across the sectors. Talking about renewable energy, Gujarat happens to be one of the leading states in renewable energy sector and has announced various policies to promote the use of renewable energy. As a result, close to a little less than perhaps 8,000 megawatt of wind energy projects, 3,600 megawatt of solar energy projects, comprising 866 megawatt of rooftop and 2,772 megawatt of crown mountain have been commissioned till November 2020. Total renewable energy installed in Gujarat, including wind, solar, biomass, and hydro has surpassed a capacity of 11,000 megawatt. We have suitably aligned our climate commitments with UN Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. As all of us know, the Sustainable Development Goals are a universal agreement to craft an equal, just, and secure world for the people, for the planet, and for the prosperity of one and all. Gujarat has recently formulated their state action plan on climate change, uh, comprising nine thematic areas, namely agriculture, water resources, health, forests and biodiversity, sea level rise and coastal infrastructure, energy efficiency and renewable energy, urban development, vulnerable communities, and green jobs. This, is, this particular plan is being revisited from time to time and uh, keeping in mind other targets and objectives set under the nationally determined contribution of the country. Gujarat is also working on other important climate actions like the promotion of electric vehicles, adaptation of communities, deployment of renewable energy, resilience building in rural and urban areas. Finally, I am thankful to the organizers and participants for organizing today's virtual meeting for One City Challenge 2020 Felicitation mm -hmm. Program and webinar on climate proofing smart cities. Hope oh, these efforts will guide all of us to achieve our desire of making this planet more sustainable and more livable for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haider. Mr. Singh and Mr. Nandani for joining us at the felicitation and sharing your respective insights. We now move on to the next session of today's discussion that would deliberate on the city's role in the climate and sustainability agenda. And I would now like to welcome and introduce our speakers and panelists for the same. 
We will have with us today Mr. Rahul Kapoor, Director, Smart Cities Mission, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Government of India. We'll also have with us Dr. Uma Maheshwaran Rajasekhar, Head Climate Center for Cities and Chair Urban Resilience, National Institute of Urban Affairs. We'd also like to welcome Mr. Tabare A. Kuris, Technical Lead, WWF Cities. Our next panelist is Dr. Sanjay Kolte, CEO, Pune Smart City Development Corporation Limited. We also have with us Dr. Jyoti Parikh, Executive Director, Irade, and Dr. Okju Jiong, Urban Planning and Climate Change Expert, Urban Climate Change Resilience Trust Fund, Asian Development Bank. Moving on, I would now like to request my colleague, Saurav Chaudhary from WWF India to give a background presentation on mainstreaming city level climate action in national and global climate agenda. Over to you, Saurav. Thank you, Sakshi, for the brief description. Uh, let me share my presentation. Is my screen visible? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining us today for this event. I'm Saurav Chaudhary, a senior program officer with the Climate Change and Energy Division of WWF India. And uh, I shall be presenting a small piece of work on and uh, some basic ideas about mainstreaming climate action at city level. Uh, while cities are both challenges and opportunities to address climate change, they have been one of the largest emitters. And in India, we have around 44% of GHG emissions originating from the urban sector. Similarly, cities have been also impacted negatively by extreme uh, weather events from like heat waves, sea level rise, and urban flood. Uh, cities, along with being challenges for climate change, are also opportunities for us to address various international goals or commitments. While the uh, UN sustainable SDGs can be addressed through our government uh, national level missions and schemes, we, uh, cities are currently addressing the national determined contribution through the uh, Climate Smart City Assessment Framework. And further cities do uh, serve, can, can serve as a tool or vehicle for addressing the larger goals of the Paris Agreement, like limiting global warming, to 1.5 degrees centigrade. And why act towards climate change? This is a pretty evident picture. Uh, while we are progressing towards a low carbon growth, we need to ensure that our growth is also climate resilient and it's future proof. Else we are uh, going to face such events later in the future. And uh, WWF uh, had uh, globally done certain studies and they found out some secrets for successful cities. And uh, we're uh, happy to share that work with you. And uh, some of the key initiatives which city should take would be to calculate the emission level, forge partnerships, show high level of political commitment, lead by strong examples by setting good targets and uh, forming partnerships with universities and other networks and also focusing on uh, actions which have additional co-benefits. And uh, while we uh, focus more in the Indian context, uh, I have uh, kind of focused some initiatives or some actions which would enable us to mainstream climate action in uh, urban scale. And uh, I'll be talking on for some of these uh, sections later in the uh, for the part of my presentation. And some of the important actions over here, which I would like to highlight would be mainstreaming and implementing national level schemes at local level, investing in sec green sectors in uh, cities, and uh, would be forging partnerships, which would enable one city to learn from other. And uh, WF India had done uh, recent studies and we have seen how uh, various schemes are aligned with uh, climate action and how they can enable cities uh, deliver on national goals. And these schemes are further uh, enabled by different organizations like UN organization, bilateral agencies, and multilateral agencies, global city networks, and other think tank. And uh, this entire work has been, uh, can be further supported uh, through climate finance, which is a very critical thing right now for cities because while a lot of finance is available for mitigation action, which are like the low hanging fruit, 
uh, finance kind of goes missing the moment we talk about climate adaptation. Again, uh, cities can channelize or funnel uh, investment opportunities from both international level and from national levels and can actually implement uh, climate actions in uh, at a lower level to smaller scale in cities. And uh, this entire work has been uh, compiled into a background paper, which uh, we are releasing today. And uh, it shall also be uh, sent to all the recipients and would be uploaded, all the attendees of our event, and would be uploaded on our uh, website shortly. Another important aspect of climate action right now is uh, abiding by the commitment uh, of Paris Agreement and about the goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade. This uh, schematic over here, this diagram shows how important it is for us to limit global warming at 1.5 degrees centigrade and the adverse effect which we face if we exceed beyond that. And what we can see is that a huge number of urban population would be actually face severe drought if you do not limit uh, our uh, global warming at 1.5 degrees centigrade. And uh, during one of our studies, uh, we tried to find ways how we can mainstream climate action. We have set some uh, goals, some objectives about how we can uh, study the existing urban level initiatives in the city and then further assess them, deep dive them and uh, align them with the goal of 1.5 degree of Paris Agreement. Uh, these, the city which we had chosen was also an OPCC city and that actually helped us to evaluate that various parameters like emission levels, risk, et cetera, on the OPCC's framework. And in the end, we have provided them recommendations which would align the city with the 1.5 degree goal and also with various national and international agendas. And uh, this paper was uh, basically, it is basically based on the IPCC's report of uh, 1.5 degree. It was uh, like created in discussion with the stakeholders from the city. And we also have received immense support from our city's core team uh, in the network. And uh, so the main highlights of this paper include about setting midterm targets, which are very crucial for a city to align with the 1.5 degree goal of Paris Agreement, which is to reduce emissions to half by 2030, and by 2050, cities should go carbon neutral. So we uh, this paper contains uh, separate recommendations, which are based on the emissions inventory and the risk and hazard. Uh, which the cities will be facing. And we have also kind of mapped how each action, whether they are new actions which are proposing or the existing ones, which can be scaled up and how they can align with our NDCs, our SAP CCs and various other schemes. And uh, this paper has been um, also so released today and uh, it will be uploaded on our website and would be emailed to all the attendees of this uh, webinar. And uh, Thank you. And I'm really looking forward to the rest of the discussion where we'll be talking more about them. Thank you. Thank you, Saurav. Uh, while Mr. Rahul Kapoor would be joining us in a few minutes, we will take the discussion forward. So I now hand over to Dr. Uma Maheshwaran Raj Sekar to take the discussion forward. I would also like to inform all the participants to put their respective questions in the Q&A section. And we will take these questions up during the end of the discussion. Over to you, Dr. Raj Sekar. Thank you very much. And um, good afternoon to all of you. And it's, it's a pleasure being part of this session and then also being a knowledge partner to the WWF event on um, climate change. Um, this I um, would like to welcome uh, the list of panelists to whom we have with us today uh, to deliberate on the issue of mainstreaming city level climate action in both uh, national and uh, global climate agenda. So um, we have with us Mr. Tabrez Kras, who's a technical lead of uh, WWF cities. Welcome, Mr. Tabrez. We also have with us Dr. Sanjay Kolte, who's the CEO for Pune Smart City Development Corporation. Um, we also have with us Dr. Jyoti Par, who's the executive director for Irade, and Dr. Oju Gyeong, who's the urban planning and climate change expert within the Urban Climate Change Resilience Trust and UCCRTF at Asian Development Bank. Um, a warm welcome to all the panelists. Uh, I would request everyone uh, who's within the panel to uh, please switch on your uh, video and also ensure that uh, your audio is quite visible. 
so we are going to have a very uh, open discussion in terms of what are uh, the possible actions and also what are the actions which are actually taking place both within the international and the national context um in this respect i would like to have the panel um respond to um a couple of questions probably i'll start with uh, dr sanjay kolte uh, who's the ceo um of pune smart city development and probably i'll follow it up with the rest of the moderators we will go through one question each and uh, then we can have all have a second round uh, of discussion more in terms of the mainstreaming post which i'll be opening up the panel for uh, questions from the audience so audience please if you have any questions do type it on the message box um, so that uh, we can compile it and post it to uh, the panelists if you are all looking uh, for a specific panelist to answer that question do mention their name so that it will be easy for us to direct the question um with this let me start the discussion before i get into the discussion uh, with the uh, panelist i would like to highlight that as we are speaking 126 cities in india are currently undertaking the climate smart city assessment framework we are very happy to inform that more than 45 partner agencies both at an international and national level have collaborated with the climate center for cities and we are very happy that wwf is one of our key alliance partners in this particular initiative um so without further ado uh, my first question to you uh, dr sanjay kolte uh, this is on how is climate action being successfully in mainstreamed in pune city uh, especially when it comes to plans and policies and can you quote some of the examples which your city uh, is implementing and uh, some of the learnings you have gained in that process thank you yeah definitely thank you good afternoon everyone uh, i thank the wwf organizers for giving me this opportunity to put forth uh, my views regarding pune smart city uh, as per in line with the UNDP sustainable development goals regarding climate action the smart city of pune right from inception has taken it up on the agenda to implement various projects in tune with the benefit of ecosystem and conservation of the environment and do their bit uh, in this direction in uh, every possible way uh, cities uh, have to be very uh, vigilant regarding the climate changes emission of greenhouse gases they should endeavor must endeavor to reduce the carbon footprints in whatever way is possible uh, by implement implementation of various activities in the uh, urban setup i would give some examples which we have implemented in pune smart city the one major project of us is the uh, electric buses e buses project of 150 e buses have been deployed in uh, pune city and these buses have so far traveled 5.32 lakhs of kilometers and they have been very much instrumental in reduction of noise pollution air pollution and the tco2 carbon dioxide percent has been reduced from 7% to 4% by use of these buses and they are, they ply on 19 routes major routes in the city the routes chosen are the those where the, the carbon footprints were more uh, so this is this has again benefited and very positive reaction from the citizens has been uh, obtained uh, so far as this uh, e buses project is uh, concerned uh, disposal of uh, e waste disposal in the form of old batteries is also taken care of in this there has been no uh, breakdowns in the transportation service again the livability part or the mobility part has been improved to a great extent and uh, uh, the environment has also been taken care of uh, by way of this project another major project is street light project was implemented in pune city in, uh, right from uh, 2016 uh, 2017 uh, with the help of tata projects in a ppp mode and uh, more than 93000 uh, lights uh, street lights in the city have been replaced with smart led lights uh, which have the dimming dimming capabilities and this has also reduced the uh power consumption or the energy consumption of the city to the to an extent of 60% there has been reduction in the greenhouse gas emissions and the without any 
financial burden on the citizens this has been positive uh, possible as the project has been taken up in the ppp mode so far 1.73 crore of uh, kilowatt kilowatt hours of uh, energy uh, has been saved uh, which amounts to almost uh, 10.4 crores of rupees so this is again this is a very uh, major project in instrumental in uh, uh, contributing to the benefit of the environment uh, another plus point of this is the centralized control uh, street all street lights in the city have centralized control at the integrated command and control center of the uh, pune smart city so the, uh, this has been able to take care of the breakdowns or the uh, whatever uh, uh, defects or faults are there that they are attended immediately from the uh, command and control center in the field of uh, en environment again cycle club pune uh, cycle plan was uh, initiated in 2016 and pune was uh, is quite quite ahead in uh, uh, pushing through the use of cycles uh, by the citizen Uh, in the smart city infrastructure works we have produced cycle tracks of almost uh, we plan to produce the 300 kilometers of cycle track so far we have taken up first uh, phase of uh, 44 kilometers of uh, redesign of roads and it includes cycle track on uh, some roads 30 meter wide roads it in, it is uh, placed in on both sides of the road while on 24 uh, meter and 80 meter roads on one side of the road cycle track has been placed Uh, so in the field of cycle we have we implemented a public uh, bicycle sharing scheme uh, with the help of uh, csr uh, for any year uh, and uh, we could find that many cycle enthusiasts uh, had uh, switched over to cycling and more than 1500 uh, enthusiasts have registered for this uh, project uh, more than 20 events uh, during the span of one and a half years were conducted where in the encouragement to use of cycles use of cycles for commuting was uh, conducted uh, then uh, tree plantation program has also been one of our uh, initiative uh, in place making uh, project where we plan to uh, plant more than 1800 18000 uh, trees it includes uh, trees in the open spaces as well as on the road sides so we have already begun and went ahead with 8000 plus uh, plantation of trees it also includes maintenance of these trees for 3 years so that is again a sustainable kind of a program in the direction of environment uh, through the smart elements project we have uh, established uh, 50 air quality sensors in the city which take care of the temperature humidity and also uh, the emissions and uh, the percentage of various gases is also Uh, data is collected uh, regarding particulate matter no2 co2 co so2 and uh, pm 2.5 and 10 all these data is collected and uh, uh, at the it utilized it is analyzed and used at the command and control center uh, we also intend to uh, perform a use case uh, from this data uh, through the uh, this platform of iudx india urban data exchange so soon we will be able to do this uh, e rickshaw project is also envisaged and uh, to reduce the air pollution and improve the first mile and the last mile connectivity in the city and providing low cost uh, medium of transport for uh, the daily commuters e rickshaw project is also envisaged by the city on the other hand uh, for regulating the traffic traffic or re uh, reducing the congestion in the traffic uh, making uh, we have devise a traffic master plan for the city uh, and it involves 125 major junctions in the city where the improvement will be uh, uh, sought through this uh, vehicle detectors and uh, uh, vehicle uh, traffic sensors and a centralized uh, mobile application for citizens whereby they will be able to know the shortest route and uh, least uh, congested route for traveling in the city we also intend to reduce thereby the pollution in this by uh, overall improvement and efficiency in the traffic and uh, also uh, making it uh, more uh, easier for the citizens by way of uh, uh, giving benefits to the pedestrians at the crossings use use of signages road markings and uh, improvement in the junction layouts is also planned uh, through the adaptive traffic management system so uh, 
with this uh, initiatives we intend to uh, continue this uh, these efforts towards the climate action and uh, as a part of uh, this uh, wwf initiative we will uh, try to achieve to maximum uh, by way of this uh, in these initiatives thank you thank you dr polti um i'll move on i mean it's thank you for sharing the amazing work which is happening within pune in that context i would like to move on to my next uh, panelist uh, mr tabrez gras uh, given wwf experience globally um how are cities globally aligning themselves to these goals and um, are are there other shining examples from asian cities which can inspire uh, you know uh, indian cities also but at the same time how are they faring you know when it comes to taking into consideration um, not only by bringing down um, the emission but also looking in terms of more resilient actions thank you very much uh, well uh, i have no words for for this invitation at first let me extend my my greetings to to everyone in here uh, i'm joining this session from mexico to me is very exciting to have the opportunity to discuss with you all these important issues so my congratulations and gratitude to organizers and and everyone that is attending but before i jump into my conversation i will also like to congratulate uh, raj kot for winning the, this award as it has been said the opc challenge our global initiative that transforms local action into global climate leadership has got the privilege to count this year with eight indian cities participating out of 200 more than 250 cities eight indian cities participated and that gave us a great pleasure to see how india is also driving local action into an inspiring global climate leadership so going back to you, to to your question i think there are there are different ways in which uh, global cities i call them like that are are facing the this challenge and probably there are many examples all around the world of how uh, ambition uh, sustainability and inclusiveness come all together in concrete transformative climate oriented actions i like to to go back to 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 the basics and talk about three things that i find common and important in successful cities that are um, uh, adopting embracing uh, this, this 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 big challenge and 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 this is not rocket science to be honest i think that the three more important elements that i see consistently being adopted in this kind of cities relate to assessing very well impacts risks as well as co benefits second very important element setting science based long term goals and interim targets and finally planning and acting immediately and let me elaborate more on all this before i jump into some examples of what i have seen in in for instance the, the asian region at first i think it's very important to to recognize that cities local regional and metropolitan governments have an ever increasing role to enable sustainable economies and particularly in the context that that we are living at the moment in the context of the pandemics uh, by the way i let me make a pause in here i wish every one of you is, is uh, enjoying good health and you're in peace in this very difficult moments that we are that we're experiencing another important thing that i that i want to say is that it is together that these subnational jurisdictions play a, a leading role in the implementation Uh, of actions that can help forecast mitigate and recover from the risk and these impacts that are not only related to climate change but are, but are also related to this kind of crises uh, emergencies that we are living such as the covid so um, i talk about three elements that i see consistently happening in, in cities and and and, I, and the first one that i that i said is measuring the right thing so you need to measure as a city what are the important things in terms of impacts and risks but not only that about also the co benefits because if you know for example your emissions data you have a fundamental step in formulating adequate climate interventions cities that are successfully driving forward the climate action they know very well where are the challenges and where are the opportunities knowing the emissions where they come from 
The impacts of increasing global warming allow these cities to prioritize, to budget better their actions. And finally, this builds the foundation of effective interventions that not only benefit the city itself, but all the citizens along the city. Second thing that I mentioned, which I find very important, and I think this is a, a major change as compared to, to the, probably the, the past 20 years of climate action, and that relates to the idea of setting good, measurable, actionable, and time-bounded objectives that are also in line with the planetary boundaries and social sustainability goals. It is important that cities, they have good targets in place because that can help them better track progress at a reasonable level of effort. But what it is more important is that those targets somehow embrace a responsibility. That responsibility that was mentioned that is taking place in Rajkot or Gujarat, well, that same responsibility that acknowledges inclusiveness, equity, and also very fundamental, obeys intergenerational justice. And I think this is quite a few elements that when you see across all these cities that are embracing long-term carbon neutrality targets, targets that are aligned to the 1.5, those are the aims that cities are looking for. Those are the, the, the social sustainability and planetary uh, bounded goals. And third, the most important, take action, take action immediately. I think uh, it was very nice uh, seeing the presentation of my colleague Sora when he showed a couple of the important examples that drive leadership. We published as WWF a report on the six successful uh, actions that this uh, the, the, that cities have in terms of climate action. And just to mention a couple of them, showing political commitment, leadership. For instance, by declaring climate emergency, we're not living anything uh, similar in, in the past. Uh, the climate emergency is now not only something that is discussed in the, in the, in the big fora out there, it's something that every citizen lives every day. It's also another important thing that um, cities join initiatives, initiatives, they show their commitment, they show their actions, but they cross share knowledge via these initiatives such as the One Planet City Challenge. Uh, developing multi-stakeholder partnerships with business, faith communities, academia. For instance, in WWF, we have a, a very interesting uh, initiative with the, we call the Climate Action Alliances, already working in several countries, particularly in, in, in Japan, in Argentina, in Mexico, soon in South Africa. These collectiveness, these collective efforts put together all the stakeholders working for the same cause. And what is that same cause? Well, start implementing solar energy projects, improving building standards, democratizing road space, promoting sustainable diets in schools, implementing sustainable standards in public acquisitions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So overall, in summary, I think the, 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 the actions that, that we take now are decisive, uh, especially if you want to reach a net zero carbon future, one that is aligned with a uh, non-net loss of biodiversity and net positive impact over nature. So which cities around the world in Asia are working uh, towards these commitments? And I think that there are several examples. I was uh, remember just when you asked me the question last year, over 130 cities, over 130 cities disclosed at the Unified Reporting System of CDP and ECLA commitments that are uh, uh, they, they are aligned with the 1.5 tra degree trajectory. Among those cities, we have, for instance, Hanoi, Vietnam, uh, Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam, Jakarta, Kuala Lumpur, Kyoto, Seoul, Tokyo, Chengdu in China, Dhaka in Bangladesh. So many examples out there. Out of those 131 cities that have uh, proposed, many of them, many of them are also participants of the climate neutrality, uh, climate ambition initiative, which is also looking climate neutrality by 2050. So I guess I will stop just here, just to the tonight for the conversation. I think I have just seeded a few of the elements. I would like just to summarize that um, at first recognizes that cities together 
can drive forward the action when they think long-term perspective, science-based oriented approaches, and when they aim at carbon neutrality, thinking more importantly, not only about the city, but about the citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kr uh, thank you, Dr. Kras. I think it's more important to recognize that they don't only uh, try to address the challenges, but uh, lead a transformative way to look beyond the current challenges. I think that's a, a very important takeaway for cities. Not, not only it's uh, important to look in terms of the projects, but also look in terms of more uh, policy and uh, planning oriented approach and collaborative approach. Just with that, I would like to, um, uh, Take my next question to Dr. Parekh. Uh, um, welcome. And uh, Dr. Parekh, you've been uh, working in this field for quite some time. And uh, what, what are the coordinated approaches, uh, especially multi-stakeholder approaches, which can be taken uh, more for national, state, and city level engagement? Uh, especially when it comes to India, we have the national mission on sustainable habitat, and we also have state action plans uh, for climate change. And right now, several of the cities are also developing city uh, strategies to address uh, either one or two key events like floods and uh, cyclone, but some of the cities have gone beyond that and looked at heat wave and uh, other, uh, you know, shocks and stresses which affect them. So what, what could be that coordinated uh, stakeholder actions possible and what, what have been your experience? Are there, uh, you know, things which needs to be uh, mainstream within these plans and programs? Over to you, Dr. Parekh. Dr. Parekh, you're muted. Uh, can I request you to please unmute? So uh, yes, we began uh, in 2008 or nine. Uh, uh, at that time, I was a member of Prime Minister's Climate Council, and we had just come out with the idea of uh, having one of the missions as an urban mission. And uh, later on, it was called National Mission for Sustainable Habitat. Uh, and uh, that time, it was thought agriculture is the most vulnerable section sector because of the uh, you know, it really depends on weather and in city one can forget about whether it's outside winter or summer or, or monsoon, but then uh, gradually it, it came to pass that uh, people realized that um, what is uh, important is that uh, so many people are uh, simultaneously be, uh, you know, be, be vulnerable. Uh, for example, anytime uh, is there any cyclone floods. So we have uh, millions of people in small amount of space. And uh, so millions and simultaneity together can become quite uh, uh, deadly and impossible to manage. And so certainly by 2010 uh, and subsequently, one could see so many um, uh, examples of Kashmir, um, Srinagar in um, uh, Chennai and Mumbai several times, Surat, of course, and, and so on, where we, we actually saw this happening and um, people were quite uh, ready to uh, act together. Uh, then uh, the uh, uh, early, in the beginning, we started working with the city administrators and for zonal planning, uh, building bylaws and so on. That was uh, 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 at that time, but then one has to go beyond and do ward level uh, work also. And we uh, cartostat data uh, began to be available, and which which zones, uh, what zones are vulnerable, which schools, which hospitals, uh, and where are the slums, and uh, can can the water uh, go there? And and uh, sometimes in in Surat we had observed some children could not go to school for a whole month after the floods, so uh, because there was a uh, you know. Uh, that was a very bad, bad uh, uh, flood, but uh, it can happen, uh, especially if you are in the river basin, 
uh, zones uh, this happens. Uh, we are working with, uh, uh, in terms of you asked me about state, uh, 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 multi-stakeholder. Um, you know, there are some laws which are uh, national level, some are state level, some are uh, uh, in the uh, ambit of uh, city administrator. So one has to look at what is the uh, 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 poss possibility of for certain types of people to act in a certain way. And uh, so in, in that case, uh, the national uh, level uh, issues exist, especially in climate mitigation, for example, um, uh, that nation has taken a very big uh, uh, role uh, by doing re announcing renewable targets and uh, even uh, LED bulbs, street lighting, uh, and so on. And so that uh, uh, knowledge comes, and then many people uh, adapt at the city level. Smart city project is uh, start it starts with national level, but then it uh, all the people uh, at the city level need to get involved. Uh, in terms of uh, a, a, a state also, you, you find that uh, certain capacity building and they are all, these cities have certain connections, uh, which uh, may not be the case with the other parts of the city, uh, of the country. So they, they all have certain things to share. And so it, it each layer, uh, 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 results into different uh, uh, addition of knowledge, uh, addition of uh, ability to do certain things. So it is uh, very necessary. And um, uh, the problem itself is uh, very uh, uh, multifarious in, in the sense that it affects, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, buildings, the power sector, you have to get the power line back, uh, connectivity, water, uh, 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 food security. So unless you uh, uh, have a multi-stakeholder approach to ensure that uh, how uh, various sectors can come together and who are the people in, in these various uh, uh, sectors that, uh, uh, that, that matters. Of, and also we looked at the, we uh, came up with the fix uh, framework, which is that the hazard, uh, every hazard need not be a disaster uh, a, uh, if we have planned for it, but uh, uh, it can happen that, um, I mean, it's possible to uh, avoid a, a, a hazard becoming a disaster if you are prepared uh, in, a, in a way uh, that 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 is understood from the very beginning, and we have seen uh, success also. Uh, uh, I think that um, how we managed um, Odisha cyclone is is quite uh, quite noteworthy and uh, remarkable. So uh, there are it, it is possible when uh, and some of these things are possible. Uh, right now we are working on the alert part of it, and as well as ward level. Uh, and, uh, vulnerability uh, and uh, ward level vulnerability is the one where we can also uh, see, as I just mentioned, that uh, which part will be submerged and which uh, which parts um, uh, things can be, uh, you know, can actually serve as a as a uh, helper, helping uh, role can be taken by that area uh, and so on. So we we need to understand that. And uh, uh, when we uh, are talking now about alerts uh, at various level, we, we, we uh, Odisha Cyclone, we managed because we knew uh, uh, well, uh, just a few days in advance, few weeks in advance, that can matter matters so much to so many lives and to, to avoid so much chaos. So, uh, which is something uh, that, was, uh, that was done. And, um, uh, how a city manages that uh, is very, uh, I mean, it requires certain uh, coordination and capacity building and um, a system in place. So, um, for example, one uh, number should reach out to all sectors and say, now this is going to happen, how do we work together? And uh, uh, 
and, and when you look at it in different ecosystem, if you are on a river basin, if you are in a hill city like Shimla, they, they are very worried that if there's a major uh, the, uh, the, the, the corridor, uh, tra travel corridor, if that there is a, a disruption there, then uh, the, uh, the entire city splits into part, two parts or five parts where one cannot reach to the other. Uh, so uh, these kind of uh, 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 pain points have to be understood beforehand. And, um, and that's where uh, we, right now uh, alerts make a very big difference uh, where you plan before. And um, uh, ward-wise level work we have been doing um, is also very useful to uh, generate the awareness in ward communities and um, it is uh, useful also for uh, better planning and uh, preparation. Uh, so, uh, and our, our recommendations have been taken for smart cities. Uh, by now we have done some analysis of 40 cities or so. And uh, we, uh, we are now looking at not just a sudden, uh, trans sudden uh, uh, episodes, which are like, uh, uh, earthquakes, cyclones, floods, uh, they are not sometimes sudden, they, they, uh, you knew about a week before. And uh, as we knew even now in COVID also, the early action makes so much difference, so much difference that uh, um, it avoids uh, chaos. So we, we are now um, at that stage uh, where uh, we, we are uh, looking at different uh, uh, issues in, in a, uh, and, and also expanding the, the range of disasters and not only sudden onset of disaster, but heat wave and heat uh, stress. So uh, there are also there are several levels. Similarly, air pollution has many uh, levels uh, and you know what to do at 400 uh, AQI air quality index. We also de develop vulnerability index of a city so these, uh, when you do begin, begin to indexing levels, etc. So make, making a distinction among situation uh, make, helps a lot. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Parekh. I, I do understand that the last mile connectivity, which was earlier referred to, and how do you take alerts to the communities? How do you get information at a what level is something which is a very critical point uh, for our discussion. And probably we, I'll come back to you on that. But with that, I'll move on to our next panelist, um, Dr. Oju Gyeong um, from ADB. Uh, so, Dr. Jung, can I mean we did talk about uh, global goals and frameworks, which many of the some at least some of the um, global cities and few of the Asian cities are doing some work around it. And we also saw some experience from the Indian cities what they are doing to actually create transformation uh, from moving from where they are today to a better future or a sustainable future for tomorrow. And we had panelists do discuss about the importance of reaching out to the community you know how do we actually engage with the community to ground some of the actions which we are doing so with that i will move on all these three tie up with respect to funds you know and whether it is funds from the national government or funds from the city government or uh, how do uh, these development agencies engage with the communities in a sustainable long-term manner because you can't put a price to somebody paying for you'll get an alert only if you are registered with us or you pay us otherwise you won't get the alerts you can't do that uh, in an urban setting given that context and also from the ucc or tf's experience what are the climate projects that have uh, received funding and uh, what are the climate projects which have proved to be quite successful uh, from your experience. Over to you, uh, Dr. Chung. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so I'm so glad to be a part of this meaningful discussion today. Uh, as you know, ADB collaborates with NIUA and the CQ as a Climate Smart Cities Alliance partner. And Mr. Manoshi Sharma, a chief of the Urban Sector Group 
ADB also worked with WWF as one of the 27 jury members of the One Planet City uh, competition, OPCC 2020. So uh, all my congratulations to uh, Lachikot, Nagpur, and the Kochi City and the WWF, and I hope to see more cities in India submit the good proposals in the next uh, OPCC competitions. Um, I'm here to share some observations from working with OPCC and the key lessons of a climate fund called the Urban Climate Change Resilience Trust Fund, UCCRTF, that I work for. ADB has in total uh, 68 funds, of which certain funds and the facilities are dedicated to supporting climate change actions. UCCRTF is one of them, it's a $150 million uh, trust fund with three donors, namely the United Kingdom, the governments of Switzerland, and the Rockefeller Foundation. As the title indicates, it supports urban climate change resilience of selected cities in uh, eight eligible countries in Asia to reduce the risk, especially the poor and the vulnerable populations are facing from floods, storms, and the drought by helping cities to better plan and implement a climate resilient urban uh, infrastructure. The fund supports the cities through ADB, uh, technical assistance, and the lending operations. In India, UCCRTF is working with multiple cities, including uh, Kolkata, Vishakapatnam, Delhi, and the cities and the towns in West Bengal state, and the Tamil Nadu state, including uh, Kudalor, and the Tutugudi, and the Chennai, for urban resilience assessment uh, and the planning, smart and resilient water supply, solid waste management, renewable energy technologies, e vehicle and the flood forecasting and the early warning systems, green and affordable housing, financing, working with the private sector stakeholders, and also a Delhi Meirut Regional Rapid Transit System uh, Project. Uh, among others, under a Smart City Mission Project TA, UCCRTF uh, supported Mohua to launch a Climate Smart Cities Assessment Framework, CSCAF version two, uh, by assessing uh, water uh, storage, solid waste management, air uh, quality, and the mobility, energy uh, building, uh, and also green cover uh, sectors. And also uh, we worked with 10 cities, including uh, Kakinada, Lanchi, Laipu, Kochi and the Panaji to a plan of an investment project and the strengthen institutional uh, capacity. We see two cities of Kochi and the Panaji also participated in the OPCC uh, this year. So uh, based on our uh, uh, experience uh, and also regarding your uh, question about uh, the climate uh, finance, uh, uh, climate uh, finance, uh, it must be noted, first of all, uh, ADB has a strong commitment for climate change actions and set out a climate operations target. By 2030, 75% of the uh, number of ADB's committed operations, so lendings, operations, and also technical uh, assistance project will be supporting climate change mitigation and uh, adaptation. Also under the operational priority number four, making cities more livable. The ADB supports its developing member countries uh, build the livable cities that are, of course, you know, green, competitive, inclusive, and also uh, resilient. The ADB's current uh, country uh, partnership strategy, we call CPS of India, specifies addressing climate change and increasing climate resilience as one of the three strategic objectives of its interventions in India. This all emphasizes that now and in the future, low carbon climate adaptive and disaster proof urban development is not anymore optional, but a central and integral part of the entire ADB interventions. 
So regarding your question, you know, which key factors help make urban project more viable for uh, climate funding? Of course, you know, to be successful, the proposal should align with the funds uh, priority and the framework. As we know, you know, each climate fund proposal or competition like OPCC has its own uh, focus and the requirement. And at the same time, there are some common factors most of climate funds, including grant providers like UCC RTF, uh, will look at. First of all, innovative approach and the replicability in integrating climate uh, resilience. Uh, in general, grant support, uh, grant uh, providers like UCC RTF support piloting of innovative and the non-business as usual project, which can demonstrate the feasibility of a new approach and which could be replicable in other cities or countries. Not all low carbon technologies, for example, are transformative. So to better capture funding opportunities, the project and the proposals should demonstrate additionality and the potential for uh, replicability. Please also note this innovative approach or additionality is not only or not necessarily related to new technologies or uh, infrastructure uh, or service project, but also to the governance system and the institutional arrangement. We see a few cases, uh, fragmented institutional arrangement or silo approach you know, constitute to the considerable you know, barriers and obstacles to make a very well designed, uh, you know, innovative project proposal, you know, to be materialized. So, uh, and second, uh, uh, proposers and the project need to have a clear linkage to larger policy framework by clearly articulating the benefits and the impact of the approach. In doing this, it's highly recommended of being able to quantify benefits. To share uh, some findings uh, from OPCC uh, competition 2020, you know, not specific to uh, the proposals from Indian cities, but much more, you know, general and the global uh, cities. Uh, the city proposers, uh, which were not able to present uh, citywide GHG emission profiles and the reduction targets, could not get a higher scores or just uh, you know, eliminated. And this confirmed the importance of our data and the evidence and the science-based approach in setting and the targeting the goals against the baseline and the prioritizing the priority actions with the highest potentials and also uh, measuring and uh, monitoring the impact of interventions. This can give a clear indication about the additionality uh, that you know, most of the climate funds are, are looking for. I want to mention also increasing a uh, number uh, of uh, you know, institutions and the government uh, use performance indicators. Without the data, you know, cities cannot properly manage and respond to the requirement. Of course, the indicators or indexes such as climate uh, smart indicators with a smart city mission, livability, and the clean India mission indicators should be well you know, harmonized and consistent to each other so that the cities are able to set the baseline and the monitor indicators and report on both climate mitigation, resilient output result, and impact from the very onset of you know, their uh, preparation. Uh, next lesson that I, uh, we want to share is the need for integrated and comprehensive solutions, which could generate cross-sectoral benefits. UCC RTF, for example, uh, prioritize low carbon uh, climate resilient project, which meet also a social and inclusiveness criteria for the benefit of uh, the poor vulnerable or other groups like women or disabled. Investigating, uh, in, sorry, <laughs> investing in urban resilience should generate multiple uh, benefit beyond the climate agenda and also move beyond state 
or city climate change action plans to sectoral urban sectoral assessment and the actions on climate resilience and the mitigation. Uh, taking a few examples of UCCRTF uh, supported project in India, uh, for example, uh, FUSE flood forecasting and early warning systems in Kolkata deals with also flooding and the drainage issues as well as solid waste management feasibility assessment. A three megawatt floating solar project in Vishakapatnam is combined with rejuvenating uh, wasteland. And also, you know, smart water management in rural district and the towns of West Bengal state deals with also non-revenue water and optimize efficient water uh, utility operations. In a similar context, uh, the balance, I want to emphasize the balance between planning and the actions or between vision and the impact is uh, very much important. In the case of OPCC 2020, not all the cities uh, applications and the proposals which have uh, and demonstrated you know, strong political, commi uh, political commitment were able to prove or demonstrate their potential of climate actions in implementing and creating an actual impact. Most of the city's uh, proposals were relatively strong in climate change adaptation, but very uh, much weaker in mitigation actions. And also not many cities have a dedicated financial, human and the time resources for climate, both for uh, climate uh, planning and implementation. So uh, yes, uh, so that is uh, maybe very quick uh, response to your question. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Dr. Jung, for highlighting that the importance of data integrated solutions, inclusion of vulnerable or the most needed people, and also establishment of an institutional mechanism to look beyond the fund duration and to make it um, you know, grounded for action. With that, I'll move to the next round. Um, uh, probably I'll ask one simple question. Uh, the panelists can take a minute or two, uh, please not more than that, so that we'll have some time to open up uh, the discussion uh, for questions from the audience. So with that, I will move on to uh, Dr. Kolte. Um, uh, so what do you what do you think? I mean, looking at um, uh, there are funds available, of course, uh, at least with respect to Indian cities, uh, the data component is being addressed through the climate smart city assessment framework or ease of living or other uh, you know municipal governance, municipal performance uh, index, so on and so forth. So what do you think uh, will be required for cities to integrate the climate actions within plans and policies? So if I phrase it differently, then what, what are the things which cities want to take it forward to the next level? Uh, first thing, uh, I think uh, participation, this uh, citizen engagement and uh, uh, is very important in what we have, we have observed when the smart city action smart city plan of uh, pune city was prepared in the initial phase citizen engagement drive was conducted that time uh, quite enthusias enthusiasm was noted and people's participation was you could able to garner up to say 40 55% of the uh, citizens were involved in the citizen engagement process however later on that faltered down and that continuity was not uh, could not be maintained. So, so I feel it very important to have a continuity in uh, citizen engagement process. And climate is such a thing. Ki the uh, it has greater uh, greater impact in whole of the city or so I say pan city like thing uh, action uh, in terms of climate or improvement of ecosystem is required. So that is one of the important factors, I would say. Later on, the policies, consistency in the uh, policies and every project, uh, these are, those are to be uh, planned, should be at the inception or at the planning stage itself. Uh, emphasis should be laid down. 
on the carbon footprints, the greenhouse gases, uh, other uh, pollutants. So in tune with uh, the, the climate action, the planning uh, process should be uh, conducted for any uh, city or uh, urban, uh, urban body. The, the, I feel this is very important. And then the impact assessment after all, after implementation of any project, impact assessment uh, is also very important that, that but thereby we'll able to know. And again, increasing awareness, uh, like most of the smart cities have now, a uh, lot of uh, huge data is being generated through the say smart elements or the various sensors, which they have set up through the, uh, and uh, controlled at the integrated command and control centers. So uh, the more, it is done in um, uh, tune with uh, climatic needs or environmental needs. The, this data can be again uh, taken on a common platform, can be used uh, for citizen or for citizen awareness, or maybe made available to other bodies, NGOs or uh, other uh, IT related uh, organizations so that they can make use of it, create use cases out of it and uh, make the citizen use that data for their uh, improvement in the quality of life and improvement in the livability, improvement in the infrastructure uh, to be uh, maintained or um, uh, created by the local bodies of the city administrations. So these uh, three, two, three points are very important in my opinion. Thank you. Um, so uh, I need to leave. So can I just make a small comment? And uh, because 4.30 okay. I have to some, yeah. So, um, no, your question is uh, quite uh, valid. Uh, it, but it requires uh, everybody to take that next step. So let's say if it's a power sector, how can you make a power system uh, less, uh, I mean, more uh, responsive uh, and, and uh, uh, more resilient to breakdowns during this time? And uh, most of all, people, uh, those who have gone through this uh, um, pain, they always say digital connectivity is the most important. If you can't uh, find, talk to your colleague, uh, 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 especially at the municipality level, there is no way you can, uh, no matter how prepared you are, no way you can implement your plan, your, your action, action plan. So, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, even the uh, finance department, you know, the so many times help help pour, pours in, but they don't know how to take it and, and deliver to the people where, where it has to go. Uh, so the, every department has to do their bit in the next level. And next level could be different for different people. Uh, it could be um, uh, more understand, I mean, uh, uh, responsive for school principal to do what next or it could be a, a hospital administration, what next? So uh, it's, it's uh, uh, people have to, uh, of course here one can, uh, the, the city planners have to um, uh, identify certain roles about what comes first and what comes next. But usually it is um, um, the, the infrastructure which has to rise up to the uh, occasion and um, Dr. Parekh, in that context, what does the development agencies need? You know, what, what kind of support does development agencies need? Development agency, by that you mean the city development or, or you mean... Uh, uh, agencies which are non-government but are working in this particular sector of climate change. Oh, uh, also NGOs and, and so on. Uh, yes. What kind of support they would need? Uh, if you could quickly highlight that, uh, that would be very helpful for the discussion. Yeah, the development uh, agencies, uh, uh, usually they, they uh, need to uh, be uh, uh, on their toes in the first place, but uh, some kind of, uh, uh, if they are not uh, no, uh, government, they need some kind of authorization uh, which makes them uh, responsible and identify their role. Uh, so people should know their role if people, uh, everybody is doing right, trying to do only one thing or nobody is trying to do certain things which are needed, then there is a chaos. 
so uh, yeah every every agency is uh, every agency has to um, know its role and they should be authorized or they should be um, uh, under, uh, able to undertake what what they uh, the, the freedom as well as uh, the uh, to, to make decision within that part of it because uh, every time you can't go and uh, search uh, the top boss uh, what shall i do about this can i go ahead with this so certain uh, amount of uh, um, uh, a certain amount of uh, accountability uh, and should be given to them uh, within certain rules uh, that should be fine thank so you very much dr parekh uh, great to uh, be here and thank you very much we will continue with our discussion uh, the next um, panelist mr kuras uh, i know from your experience what kind of support you think in terms of policy capacity building and finance will help enable a faster transition i know cities are doing good some of them are doing good some of them are in the process of doing good <laughs> but what can what are the three things which can help in faster transition towards that Well, I, I actually, if I would like, if I would need to choose, I would choose one, and and I will tell you which one is that one. I think uh, it's somehow already mentioned by Dr. Colte and Dr. Parikh, and the word that I would use uh, relates to integration, integration of policies, integration of governance, integration of actions. I think cities really need support to find this bi-directional way of integrating their Uh, their efforts to some extent from the bottom up in a way to 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 influence the national action the to influence the national level and on the other hand from the top down in a way to enable the the, the a fairer game for for multiple players to 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 be in the space i think integration is very important i think there are several examples of of uh, of it i I was thinking, for instance, in the Asian context, and me not being an expert, but find it fascinating about the story or the case of Seoul in Korea with their developments of renewable energy at city level. So 200 megawatts of distributed solar PV that has been somehow enabled by creating the space for that integration, by creating a Seoul Energy Corporation that drive forward the, 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 or incentivize the developments of renewable energy by creating mandates, renewable energy targets, and public uh, building goals in terms of electricity based from renewables by uh, enabling financing conditions uh, to offer low interest for the acquisition of electrical vehicles, the procurement of electrical vehicles. So overall together, those are the exercises, the examples that I think uh, cities are, are really keen to learn how, how they can find Uh, a better way of integrate and not only to create infrastructure i would say but also to create the motivation and enabling conditions for people to use that infrastructure and be detonators of that change thank you cross i think integration is um is one of the key aspect and you rightly brought it to the forefront um having you know alignment in a dinner table discussion is itself difficult in india uh, while we are thinking about integrating around climate change but i am with you on it it's very much important along with institutionalization of creating a one stop solution i think uh, integrating across various stakeholders is very key uh, with that fi my final question to dr yong and then probably we'll take few questions which have already been raised by uh, our uh, participants Dr. Jong, how can cities be further supported uh, uh, to help address some of these fundable projects? Because in India, the data is available with all these frameworks in place. Uh, of course, we have a baseline for 100 cities uh, in 2019, and we also have um, a baseline uh, plus transformative change for these 100 cities. Plus, 26 cities have further come up to. develop their own baselines as a part of the current assessment and we are very thankful that adb is very much into the climate smart city assessment framework and also creating data mechanisms moving from data how what do you think 
a support knowledge support or technical support which cities will require to address or uh, access some of the funding requirement uh, what are the yeah so thank you so much you know for the question okay but i i think uh you know in my previous response uh i have already shared very key uh you know observations and the findings uh, from uh ucc rtf and also uh, OPCC. Uh, so um, again, you know, I want to uh, echo on what uh, Mr. Tavare, yeah, exactly my pronunciation is good. So Mr. Uh, Tavare Kuras, uh, you know, shared. So uh, again, the integrated approach, integrated sol solutions. So from planning to implementation and to get out of the you know, silo, uh, silo approach and looking for the cross-sectoral you know, approach which can maximize uh, the potential or impact of one single uh, you know, investment or project. So uh, that is really a key uh, issue. And also, in other words, you know, integrated approach uh, you know, differently, uh, if I differently formulate is also working together. So working together, you know, between uh, different uh, sector groups and the different institutions and the different stakeholders from the public sector and the private sector and etc. So to take integrated approach, we have to work with uh, different uh, stakeholders and uh, work together and also uh, having uh, you know, strong and good uh, partners, uh, you know, like external uh, partners like uh, you know, ADB or WWF, any other you know, members of uh, the, the, the cli uh, smart uh, climate, uh, sorry, uh, climate uh, smart cities uh, you know, alliance partners. So working with those partners will be also a very efficient way uh, for cities to be connected with and exposed of uh, to you know different uh, agendas and the development initiative uh, you know at global level. So how to localize the global agendas to the local context, you know, is uh, through the working together with uh, external uh, partners for a uh, long term and a short term uh, partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jung. I think that makes perfect sense with that i'll move on to uh, some questions from the participants uh, i'll try to classify them and probably address it to uh, the panelists accordingly the first question to dr kulti uh, i'm just combining two questions together one uh, they have some of the participants have asked that uh, what is the uh, you know whether the environmental benefits of some of these projects uh, were quantified uh, and also the second question, um, which I want to post to you is, what can Indian cities offer the rest of the world when it comes to climate change? So, sir, if you could um, break it up into two parts or answer them together, uh, both will be fine. Okay. Yeah, the first one, uh, this uh, assessment of the environmental impact, and that is the first part. So in our case, in case of uh, projects uh, implemented by Pune Smart City, uh, we had uh, done a small exercise, like uh, in case of e-bus project, just I uh, told you that uh, we could assess that the carbon CO2 percent, TCO2, there were, we could find a significant reduction in TCO2 due to implementation of uh, the electric buses. There were 150 in number, a sizable fleet uh, was implement, uh, was running in the has been running in the city and the CO2 percent has reduced from 7 percent to 4 percent. This is one of the small impact that we could assess and uh, our e-bus uh, project has also been recognized by the Scotch Foundation and we got the semi-final uh, order of merit uh, award uh, for this uh, project. Likewise in uh, street light again the re reduction of say energy uh, Fossil fuel consumption or fossil fuel consumption has been reduced uh, by this uh, uh, electric buses pro project also. And overall consumption of energy by the street light project has been uh, significantly reduced to the extent of 60%. So this is one of the uh, smaller say impact assessment exercise that uh, we could uh, conduct. 
but in future we plan to uh, be more uh, sensitive and uh, uh, take this forward and uh, have impact study of uh, other projects also in terms of environmental impact secondly the processes in india as compared to the cities in the uh, abroad or the foreign countries that that is the second part and uh, that has been asked again the we have to go through the tedious procedures and right from the inception uh, participatory development is the catch word or is the is the key word i would say in a country like uh, uh, india so the more it is a uh, we adopt the participatory um, urban development approach the better outcome of various initiatives in, in terms of climate or environment can be Uh, achieved uh, that is what uh, has been observed so far take an example of uh, solid waste management which is uh, again related to every house and it has a pan city impact and so unless uh, we reach or our message reaches each household and you know, regarding the segregation of waste and collection of waste then the disposal then the treatment or the recycling so everyone should be uh, Uh, should be united or they should be um, convinced of one single message so that can give that can multiply the success of uh, any scheme so uh, that is why this i think this is very important which is uh, the extent or the numbers or the density of population is lesser in uh, cities abroad so these things are and they are better equipped, equipped with technology technology background that that is why engagement part is very easy for them compared to the indian smart city i would say but then we are nevertheless we are now moving forward with the incorporation of a lot of technology uh, incorporation of sensors even in uh, solid waste management uh, the dustbins with sensors or rfid sensors can be now set up and then we can monitor the level of uh, dustbins and they can be controlled from a centralized uh, command and control center so modern technology of course can be implemented now in our our cities our smart cities also so let us look forward to uh, have more and more uh, such activities thank you sir uh, the next question is to uh, Mr Cross it's a little bit complicated question let me rephrase it for you um, in europe the 15 minute city model that anybody can reach anywhere within the city using either public uh, transportation or bicycle or walkable uh, you know pathways uh, payments so what do you think about that model whether it applies in a nation context I think that's an excellent question and I've been thinking myself about that for a long time not only in the Asian context uh, particularly in my region in Latin America and and to be honest I, I don't have a a a solution in fact I believe there's no one fit solution I think it's a matter of 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 trade-offs and and I, and I think that that's totally fair um To me, there's no perfect model for every single place. Uh, every every city needs to 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 experience, and there are places where that 15 minute might make sense more than than in others. But in the end, uh, I think there are important uh, conflicts uh, uh, in this, and that's why I believe this question is so relevant when we think about uh, the idea of compact cities. um where we can maximize or optimize resources and be be more efficient well we end up in the situation like we have for instance now with covid by packing everything uh, we we create something that we did not expect and and, and i think we are in a learning process in, in that respect but the key word in here perhaps if i if i have a, an inclination for for a particular opinion i think the the key word in here is the idea of efficiency how we can become more efficient in the things 
that we do, in the lifestyles that we have, it might it might have it might make sense for some for 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 some places to have that 15 minute walk distance, but for some others we will need to find other solutions. We might we might need to to find a way to democratize green spaces. Yes, but we also need to find a way that uh, preserve that environmental space for not being touched by any human activity. So I I guess um, I have I, I I'm honest I don't have an answer to this. I give you my opinion. And what I believe is that again, there's no one fit solution for all. We need to explore uh, the options and, and always looking for how we can become, uh, we, how we can have better lifestyles and become our resource management more efficient. I hope that more or less provides a clear answer to the question. Thanks uh, for, the, for the comment. Thank you, Skuras. I think it does provide an answer, but uh, of course, this discussion is is a long one and uh, probably that is something which um, the participants uh, can address and this can be taken up beyond the, this particular event. My last question to Dr. Jung, and I think uh, uh, many of the investments which ADB uh, has done both in infrastructure projects, are there cases of um, you know, economic, uh, increase in economic activities or for example, you know, there is, there is always a debate between um, development needs and the climate change needs. So in terms of uh, increase in employment, increase in uh, you know, uh, the pay scale or other activities, especially with respect to uh, economic drivers, have there been any of the climate projects which have contributed to it or your take on it, whether it should at all be looked together or it should be looked separately? Okay, thank you so much, you know, for uh, yeah, for the question. So um, yes, so uh, I, I mentioned the CPS, a country uh, pri uh, partnership uh, strategy of uh, the ADB has uh, three strategic objectives. So one of them, one of the three is climate change. And the second one is in uh, inclusive of an infrastructure and the services. And uh, the first one is uh, the economic uh, competitiveness and the development. So those competitive aspect and the inclusive aspect and the climate resilience and the sustainability aspect are all important. So um, uh, again, you know, my response to the question is more uh, again, you know, integrated approach. For example, an urban uh, infrastructure investment can generate jobs. So generate jobs which contribute to economic development. And also, of course, you know, that uh, economic development can benefit the, uh, the lives of the poor and the poor and the vulnerable populations. So meeting the social, uh, you know, aspect of the interventions. So this kind of uh, cross-cutting and integrated approach can help not only just the climate resilience or climate resilience goals, but also other you know, economic uh, you know, goals and the inclusive aspect of the investment. So for taking a uh, Vishaka Patnam and the Chennai uh, project that UCC RTF provide. So uh, for example, ADB has a you know, huge infrastructure project of 245 million US dollars alone for Vishaka Patnam Chennai Industrial Corridor Project program we call VCI CDP. So for their project, you know, mainly the loan part is dedicated to the key urban infrastructure directly relevant to the economic uh, industrial corridor development. And while the grant project and the other you know, social and uh, sustainable dimension can be met by, uh, by the, the climate uh, fund like a UCCRTF. So meeting, the you know different uh, perspective of a development goals uh, you know through the the one project I think that is the really uh, we have to uh, uh, take and uh, prioritize for the next uh, you know approach that uh, we are uh, expected to uh, take. Yeah. Thank you. I think that that 
gives a good um, closure that most of the climate actions need not uh, be only environmentally friendly, but they can also be uh, economically supportive in uh, cities development. With that, I'll uh, bring this to a closure and thank you all the panelists uh, for your wonderful thoughts. And I hope uh, all the participants did enjoy it. And uh, I'll hand it over to WWF and wishing you all uh, safe and happy holidays. Thank you, Dr. Raj Sekar for sharing this interesting discussion. I would now like to call upon my colleague, uh, Dr. Suchismita Mukhopadhyay, Associate Director, Climate Change Energy Program for the closing remarks. Over to you, Suchismita. Thank you, Sakshi. Um, I would like to uh, begin by be thanking uh, right from the beginning, from the beginning of the felicitation. Thank Mr. Heather for taking time to join us for this event. Mr. Ravi Singh for joining us uh, for this event. Um, the city of Rajkot, congratulations to them once again. Uh, they've uh, been winners for the third time the, uh, this year and they have consistently shown uh, you know, uh, progress. They've shown commitment and intent to basically take climate action forward and which is definitely an encouragement for um, all the organizations that are working with the cities as well as for um, other cities to basically take an example. Also, congratulations to the cities of Nagpur and Kochi that uh, made it as the finalists. They have also taken progressive actions. They have also shown intent and commitment. And uh, definitely going forward, we will see a lot more of climate action from Indian cities uh, going forward. Um, I would like to thank all our panelists, um, Dr. Kolte, Dr. Parikh, Dr. Young, Tabare uh, for joining us at 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I believe it's 4 a.m. in Mexico. Uh, Dr. Uma Maheshwaran, thank you so much for your support in planning this and uh, for the excellent moderation. Um, I would like to thank NIUA CQ for agreeing to partner with us for this event. I think it's added a lot of value to the deliberations, to the discussions and the overall uh, quality of the event. And we look forward to keeping uh, going, uh, keep this going and working with you together. Uh, uh, the three takeaways for me from this discussion, I think there is a lot more that came up, but the three words which really stuck with me were the need for integration of policy, governance and actions, uh, the need for um, coordinated approaches at different levels at the national, state and city level, as well as uh, among the different stakeholders to make this happen. Uh, the definite need for citizen engagement. I think that's a very important point that came up that we need to have continued engagement with citizens to know exactly what needs to be done and how things will work. And finally, the need for awareness and capacity building. So to, just, a, uh, just a small gist of uh, the few things that stuck with me, but there's a lot more that we've gained from these discussions and we hope to have similar discussions in future and also uh, basically uh, firm it up with more action and implementation on ground so that uh, Indian cities can definitely come up on top. And uh, at some point, we can see Indian cities also being the winners, the global winners of the One Planet City Challenge. So that's a dream for us in WWF India to have an Indian city as a winner in the coming years. Thank you so much to all our audience for joining us, for staying with us and for the excellent questions. And till next time, um, happy holidays and have a, a great new year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.